Godzilla was the first limited 5 star released in Honkai Star Rail, and with the release of other limited 5 stars such as Imbibitor Lune, it's starting to make people wonder if Sila is falling off. So today I want to look at Sila, you know, talk about what she does really well, and ultimately see if she really is falling off or is there something else going on. So first I'm going to talk about what makes Sila really great as a DPS character and her main selling points. Then I want to talk more heavily about DPS characters and like why they get power crept a little easier than other types of characters. And then answering the ultimate question of if she is falling off. So starting out with what makes Sila great. So Sila's main you know thing as a hunt character is that she does really great single target damage. And pairing that with her Resurgence ability, which allows her to get another attack for free when, he, when she defeats an enemy, is also really good. Because, for one, that attack is not considered to be its you know, own turn. It's, all, it's considered to be on the same turn as the you know, attack that uh, d defeated the enemy. And that's really helpful too, because you know if you have buffs on her, you have you know debuffs on the enemy because it won't count as a separate turn if that's like the last turn that the buff is active for like the debuff on the enemy is active for then you're not really going to have to worry about it being active for one attack but not for the next one which is also nice and then also with Sila being your more like traditional dps setup she definitely is boosted a ton by harmony characters especially Bronya, because if you're running Bronya and Sila and you get in a good situation there's definitely, there have definitely been times where I've, you know, done Sila's skill, killed an enemy, done like her skill again, then yeah, killed that enemy, then used her ultimate to kill a third enemy, and then I get a, my extra action on the fourth enemy, which is really insane when you think about it. If she's able to, yeah, if your Sila is able to consistently output that level of damage, and yeah, she just ends up doing really well in those situations, and she does have that added. Uh, you know, multi-target viability with her resurgence. So now, I want to talk about DPS characters, and I kind of did talk about this um, in a recent video about Imbibitor Lune, but DPS characters are easier for gacha game companies to power creep compared to, you know, support characters, healers, all that kind of stuff. Because when it comes to replacing a DPS character, it really ends up being about what is you know important to fight at in terms of like the end game enemies so for honkai star rail it's going to be memory of chaos for the most part and when it comes to the types of enemies that you're fighting and the types of fights that you're in well yeah what's really going to make your know, dps is better is either going to be the amount of damage that they do which you know we have seen some increases there you know with um your characters like blade kafka and Bible de lune like Bible de lune is definitely the most damaging uh, DPS character in the game right now you know when he is performing at his best which is I think the only kind of issue with him is that he depending on your team he might not be super consistent but yes yeah, so either that for damage or it is about uh, how characters can do and how you know how their kit is with the current state of the end game and it's a lot easier to you know make these changes for DPSs, because when it comes to damage, you know, you can just make a DPS that does more damage, as you've seen with Imbiber Lune. And then also you can make a DPS that benefits from the way that, you know, the end game is, or does really well with the way the end game is, which they kind of do for um, Forgotten Hall and Memory of Chaos, because they do make the, like, res the, like, effects, or, like, the bonuses for Memory of Chaos a lot better or like the newer characters like right now we have the trotters that increase skill points when they're defeated which is going to help out by better lune a ton so that definitely is something to keep in mind as well and because it's you know pretty easy to make them you know make the dps characters better for power creep it, it definitely is not anywhere near as easy to do for like supports and healer characters just because for them, they already have like a good amount of utility, and for them it's less about, you know, attacking head on with the way the enemies are, but it's more so about what they can offer to those DPSs. And because a lot of the DPSs, you know, with the main sort of 
you know, different DPS being Kafka for the most part. And then I guess, you know, you can count Clara as well because she's going to be doing a lot of the counters. But a lot of the DPSs, they pretty much all benefit from similar things. So since support characters are able to give similar things, I mean, they might do it in different ways. Like, you know, Brania, Tingyun, Asta, and Yukong, you know, they all have their own ways of supporting characters. And some, you know, might have better synergy with others. But because their, you know, because their value falls under utility and a lot of characters will benefit from utility in similar ways, it's a lot harder to power creep support. So that's why like, I've always said that characters like, you know, Brawny and them are going to be very valuable and very strong for a long time. So now to answer the question of the video, is Sila truly falling off in Honkai Star Rail? So I do not think she's falling off at all. I think you know, her damage is still very good. She fits on some very good you know, team comps with some good Harmony characters. Um, you know, especially Branya. Ting Yun also works very well with her. And you know, she can just do a lot of damage. But the one thing that I do want to point out is that the current state of the endgame with um, Memory of Chaos and the things that you know, players that are getting to higher ranks are really focusing on, they are not tailored to her single target play style. Which is what is probably making players think that she is, you know, not as good anymore. Because a lot of the things now, you're fighting character, you're fighting like three enemies, four enemies, five enemies at a time. And if you're running a single target damage dealer, and you're fighting like, you know, Memory of Chaos, like eight, nine, or ten, like those really higher end stages, and your seal isn't like amazing, then you're going to struggle to get those kills and get those like really strong uh, sequences where you can get, you know, two skills and then ultimate and then another skill because your Sila is, you know, not being able to take out the enemies with the way that the bonuses are and just the way that these enemies are as well. But yeah, overall, she still is very good. I'm interested to hear what you all think about Sila in the comments down below. But with that, I'm going to end it off here. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to hit the like button, comment, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. But I will see you all next time.